We got work to do. Welcome to How Would I Hell, a Supernatural Podcast. I'm Kristen. And I'm Christine. And this week we have a mailbag mini sode for you guys. Um, instead of, I think, episode four, Metamorphosis. <laughs> now, I think there's a few reasons for this, though. One is that we have, well, one is that, like, as you guys have heard, um, I'm like taking this exam and like it's a big deal because it's, it's a big deal. You make it sound like it's this <laughs> oh, I'm taking this test. It's her MA exam. It's got <laughs> two parts on different days. There's yeah. like a written part and an oral part, and it's like a it's a big dang deal. So like, yeah, I'm freaking out about it. And it's like <laughs> in four days, and yeah, it's crazy. So that's one reason. And then the second reason is that we have like a bunch of emails and voicemails and a video, a fucking video from yeah, you guys, which is awesome. Video. Um, yeah. But, um, and I did want to kind of like clear up some stuff because people have been like not sure which email address to send it to. <laughs> uh. So like, just to explain, um, when we first created the podcast, I got like super excited and like a dummy made a <laughs> Gmail address uh, called podcast supernatural at gmail.com and uh, and use that for a little bit and to hook up some of our stuff. And it's like the main one that we use. But then I was like, no, I should actually have like a good email address. So I made the highway to hell podcast at gmo.com, which is <laughs> what we want you guys to use. <laughs> like, yeah. Please use that one. <laughs> but um, eventually we'll get rid of the podcast supernatural one. I mean, that's just in itself a beast of a task. Yeah, it is. All of our accounts are hooked up to that one. Um, yeah, we'll swap it out someday. It'll be fine. Yeah. I mean, if I was able to do that with my Yahoo you know, going to G going over to Gmail, my mm -hmm. personal, like it happened eventually. <laughs> Just took a while. <laughs> um, but no, we have a lot of really great emails and stuff from from some of our listeners. Um, and the first one is from MSA underscore Arda. Yeah, yeah. Uh, we. This is a really the awesome email. Yeah. Do you wanna do you wanna read this one, Christine? Sure. Yeah, y'all my it's very long, M Arda. This is a very long email, so I may have to take a, a water break in between. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so hello Kristen and Christine. First of all, congratulations on the engagement, Christine. Oh, thank you so much. Huh? I just I can't stand it. So sweet. I know. Thank you so much. That's very sweet. Uh, I've said this before on Twitter back when you were discussing Bella in season three, but I think part of the reason why Bella was so unliked wasn't the fact that she was outsmarting the boys at every turn. Well, it's the apparent cause of the dislike, but the reason behind that isn't the fact that she gets one over the boys. It's that the circumstances in which they happen could have been avoided entirely if they wrote the boys as smart as they usually are. We kind of felt like that too. That's very interesting. Yeah. And I, I also love that, like, we're still talking about Bella. Like, she is that great of a character. Like, even, even though she caused, like, this dissension in the supernatural fandom, kind of, like, she still brought out a lot of emotions as a character. And that's important, you know? Yeah, she made an impact for sure. Yeah. Um, it says, I know I keep coming back to this, but Bella being able to steal that bottle from Dean and just being there to discover the cult's hiding place when the vault was opened. Those two situations especially breaks my suspension of disbelief in a way that the character never recovers. And I actually love the idea of a character like Bella. Someone actually outsmarting the boys would have been so much fun. 
Plus, Lauren Cohen is an amazing actress, and I totally wanted to see Angry Sex between Dean and Bella, even though my heart is with Lisa and Dean. Hey, same. <laughs> yeah, same. <laughs> Big ol' same. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's just that the writing for the character didn't really work for me. I think the fact that we're introduced to a similar version of this type of character later in the series, and the love we, the fan base have for this person even though their goals are in conflict with sam and dean most of the time proves my point i guess i can make a better comparison when you meet this person though so i should just move on i don't know what person they're referring to but what is that i'm excited for that (laughs) with this email i've sent you a pdf text and it explains why kripke decided to bring the angel mythology into the show thank you very much Mm mm-hmm It is fascinating, really. And you were definitely on the right track with your discussion. It has a minor spoiler about the nature of angels and the season generally, but it's something you can figure out slash find out at the end of season four, episode two. So after after watching the second episode, you can read this without worrying about being spoiled. Thank you. Uh, Yeah, thank you for the spoiler warnings. (laughs) That's really helpful to us. Yeah, it is. (laughs) Because I feel bad, like Kristen's usually the one who ends up checking everything first or like has to do all the work because I'm like, anyone who gets spoiled. Yeah. (laughs) Um, Now, my thoughts about season four, episode one. Fair warning. I love this episode. I was so glad to see that you liked it, too. From the episodes you've seen so far, this is the one I liked the most. I disagree with you about the fact that this episode jumped from one thing to the next and didn't follow one specific thing aka too fast-paced, to be considered better than Mystery Spot and was weaker as an individual episode. This episode did follow one big mystery. How did Dean get out of hell? The first scene of this episode was Dean coming back to life, and the last scene was the answer to how that happened. Between those scenes, people reunited and some characterization scenes were placed, but essentially they were trying to figure out what resurrected Dean and what to do with this. And we got the answer in the same episode in an epic manner. I agree with all that. Mm -hmm. Uh, I've rewatched this episode a few times, and I can definitely say that this is not Malleus Maleficarum. And I'm not saying it just because I don't like that episode either. (laughs) (laughs) Similar to that episode, season four, episode one introduced new lore and was very important for the plot. More important than season three, episode nine, certainly. That's true. Yeah. But this new lore not only expanded the supernatural universe in a massive way, but was also directly tied to Sam and Dean's personal stories. Yeah, she's absolutely right. You know, like we, I think we had compared it to Malleus Maleficarum because that one had all of this new plot and, uh, I just dropped my bone. (laughs) Oh no. Okay. I thought thought it was your cup. (laughs) No, no. Yeah. My wine is fine. (laughs) Um, but no, yeah, where Malleus Maleficarum had introduced all of this new lore about the demons, so we didn't know where exactly demons came from, right? And that was, we were really excited about that. But this one was that, but on a much larger scale. And it also, yeah, it also did tie into Sam and Dean's personal lives because we find out Sam still has his powers, and that was a big deal of his identity in season one and two, right? Oh, yeah. Um. And then Dean, that Dean has some sort of connection to God or like he's been chosen by God or something like that. So it, yeah, it, it, that it was is a, huge, a way. A huge reference. Like, I guess revelation. I was going to say curveball. <laughs> yeah, that too. But, yeah. Um, so I could see that. Totally. Mm-hmm. Um, okay. So it says to this day. I still find stuff I never thought about when I rewatch this episode. Scenes between many characters have much deeper meaning once you know about the future storylines. The epic feeling you felt, it never really goes away. I get chills every time Castiel enters the room and shows his wings. I (laughs) overanalyze. Same. I overanalyze the conversations with the same enthusiasm. On the other hand, I can't really fault you for keeping Mystery Spot at number one. It is a masterpiece, a perfect mix of humor and tragedy. It is at number two in my list, after all. <laughs> I just wanted to say that you wouldn't have a situation as you had with Malleus Maleficarum in which you would look back and think that you placed it so high just because of its importance for the plot and world building. 
good thoughts. Yeah, that's mm-hmm. cool. Which is really great because it seemed big and I wanted it to, you know, feel that way. And obviously yeah. we'll see as we continue, like, if I personally feel that way or, you know, like if it holds up for me. But um, I'm just glad to know that it stays important. Yeah, I think especially since, you know, I I definitely think it felt in the moment, like, oh, this is, we're going on a whole different path. Um, and I definitely feel, think it feels that way, you know, like there are some moments in certain television shows where it's like, okay, we've been kind of doing this, you know, like on Buffy, we were in high school for a while, but you mm-hmm. know, now we're going to college, mm-hmm. you know, <laughs> <laughs> we're leveling up a bit. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, Okay, it says, with that out of the way, I can talk about the little things you discussed in this episode. I hope I remember correctly because it's been more than 12 hours since I've listened to your new episode and I had two different midterms after that. No Ooh, judgment. Get it. Yeah. yeah. I hope they went well. I hope well. you did. I'm sure they went well. Yeah. <laughs> you rocked it. Mm-hmm. On two different occasions, you mentioned the possibility of Dean being disappointed by the fact that it was not Sam who rescued him. And in the second one, you mentioned that he might have been disappointed that Sam didn't or wasn't able to use his special powers to save him. It's interesting to me because I didn't get that vibe at all. I can see things your way in the first one, when Dean learns about Sam not being the one to save him, maybe, but I don't think the second time he was disappointed. Dean's feelings about Sam using his powers to save him has always been clear to me. He is against it. And it's deeper than having a bias against supernaturally powered people. He might be on guard with them, but such people usually turn out to be murderers and people who used their powers at the expense of others' well-being. So his second guess is somewhat justified. Um, Yeah. Before she gets to this next part, I I totally agree with that. And especially, I mean, maybe it's a little bit of cheating now since we've seen episode four at this point. Um, But yeah, it's, it's much clearer now that now Dean's not on the side at all Sam using his powers Mm -hmm. even if it were to save him you know Mm -hmm. yeah um but that's not all (laughs) Dean was cool with Andy for example once they found out he wasn't actually using his powers to kill others and after he helped them take out the real killer yep I think Dean's main issue with Sam's powers is what they mean for Sam such thoughts began to shape in Nightmare uh, season one, episode 14, but started to worry him, especially in season two, because he saw what happened to the special children when their powers got stronger. That makes sense. Yeah, it makes a lot of sense. I, I had actually totally forgotten about Andy mm-hmm. um, from I Simon Andy. Said, right? Yeah, he was really cool. And, and you know, he wasn't using his powers for good. Um but he wasn't necessarily using them. Well, maybe for bad, but uh, <laughs> more, more like naughty, you know? Like yeah, just... yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, but no, Dean was totally cool with him. He just let him walk off. He didn't think he was a threat or a, a dangerous person at all. Yeah, they were kind of friends. Yeah, so I don't know. But maybe with Sam because it's his brother and he, you know, feels that a little bit more strongly. Mm-hmm. Ava and Jake experienced major power-ups once they gave in and developed a darker mindset. Ruby also waited until Sam was desperate enough to even mention the possibility of Sam's powers being the way to save Dean. And it should be clear that if Ruby thought Sam would refuse it until he was desperate enough, it might actually be a bad thing. Dean definitely thought so. All of this was to say that I don't think Dean was disappointed about Sam not using his powers to save him. I thought he was quite relieved. On that note, when I first watched this, I actually believed Sam until the scene in the diner. Oh, until the scene in the diner, that is one moment. I thought Sam was going to execute a well thought plan, maybe like the one in Jew and Bello to take out the demons. Next moment, bam, (laughs) Sam became a beast and exercised the demon. Like it was nothing. And Ruby reveal. Yeah. (laughs) I thought Sam's new power set was very reminiscent of Ava's ability to control the ooh, what how do you say that? Akurai? What I don't yeah, maybe. Demons? Akari? Akiri? I don't know. 
Yeah. Demons back in season two, episode 21. I certainly appreciate the continuity of keeping them related to dynamic, dynamic, demonic abilities. <laughs> Demonomic. Really true. And actually, oh my God, I'm having thoughts. So remember Lilith, like being able to, I, I guess what she did was she pushed out Ruby from her body, right? So she has the powers to kind of control the other demonic entities around her, perhaps. Mm -hmm. And so Ava did have that ability. And that was that was an interesting choice. Like, but Sam kind of has the same thing going on for him. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's I've never really connected those dots. So that's really fascinating. Yeah, that's really good insight. Uh, in addition to being badass, it also brought up new questions, and some of them are actually concerning. Like, one, at the end of last season, Sam's powers were dormant. How exactly did they come back? The assumption is because of Ruby, but I would still like to know a detailed answer at this point. This point being season four, episode one in the show. Me too. And that's something I thought about. And I don't know if we're going to get to see that journey or not, you know, if we're ever going to get like just a verbal explanation or any flashbacks or anything like that. Like what exactly happened while Dean was in hell? Like what happened to you? How did this come about? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. With Sam, um, you mean? Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Uh, question two, Sam is powerful enough to exercise demons with his mind. That is much more powerful than having visions, certainly, but he doesn't seem to be giving into negative thoughts like Ava and Jake. How is he able to stay sane like that? Hmm. Is that how the special children powers worked? Where he, I thought it was more like the influence of the yellow eyed demon. Yeah. Right? I don't know, actually. Or maybe he, he was just like an additional factor to it. Like, give in to your powers, you know, like. Yeah, because I sort of, at this point, now that I know what I do about the special children, I mean, I guess maybe Sam was supposed to be the strongest or something. So maybe that's why it doesn't affect him as much. But um, I don't know. I, I guess it just kind of seems like they would all have had those powers at the level that they did anyway yeah but interesting thought know. though uh question three ruby didn't mention this to sam until he was desperate enough to consider this why and what does that mean for sam now that he accepted ruby's methods that's a good question i don't know i don't i don't know either so why why would he yeah that's true why would he have to be desperate to turn to this mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah and also that other part like what does that mean for him now that he accepted this help from ruby and using his powers like I don't know. Did he sign accidentally sign some contract or something? You know, Ooh, like Sabrina the Teenage Witch style. <laughs> yeah, maybe. I don't know. I like this though. Mm -hmm. uh, the third question, especially, was very concerning for me since I went into this episode after I watched season three, episode sixteen, on the same day. Unlike Christine, I wasn't strong enough to stop. Lol. <laughs> <laughs> That's I would intense. Be, it's tough. I would be binging it right now if I didn't have that, you know, dedication. Yeah. Uh, of course, some or all of these questions will be answered in the future, but I would be interested in hearing your thoughts about them. Maybe while we explore Sam's side of the story more. Now, the last part of season four, episode one. What can I say? A lot, actually, but I'll try to keep it short. <laughs> It was brilliant. The set design was awesome. Creating all those sigils must have been very time consuming for the crew. And the simple but impactful special effects in the scenes with Castiel were very well done. This is a low budget show, so you can't uh, expect that much, especially not in the earlier seasons. But they have this clever, clever way to leave some stuff to the imagination so that it can be much more impressive. You talked about this too. I especially love the angel wings. I was, that's what I was thinking of our conversation about that. Yeah. It's still one of the most epic things I've seen on television. 
I don't think I'm being biased when I say that, but I also acknowledge that everyone has different experiences. No, it was no, pretty I completely agree. Awesome. Yeah. <laughs> it was really cool. And even though it's a low budget show, I don't think they show it. You know, I think mm-hmm. I think they're able to hide that pretty well with the use of practical effects and like CGI that they use. Yeah. Um I mean certainly in ep- uh, season 1, the CGI that they chose to use, especially in that pilot episode was a little ugh, a little mm-hmm. cheesy, but um but I think they like reined it in and like the demon cloud that cost billions of dollars or whatever looked great, you know. So <laughs> <laughs> it sure did. Um, and that was pretty expensive, but you know, like everything else they do is done really well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they've obviously gotten a little bit more of a budget by this point. And I was going to say, it doesn't really act like a low budget show. You know, it's not like... Mm -hmm. They don't confine their storyline to small spaces or like... It's like, oh man, we can't do angels. (laughs) Exactly, yeah. It's like, no, we're going to make it work. Yeah, and they made it work by putting him in a human body and you know bringing it bringing it into this space so it's not it's not costly it's not like we're you know shooting in heaven or something mm-hmm. getting into angel talk i say it's impossible for me to talk about angels castiel and some parts of dean's storyline without going into spoiler territory so i'll put them away for now <laughs> but i do want to mention one thing that makes me very happy dean becoming the focus of new su- supernatural lore He had emotional storylines, but this is actually the first time a new supernatural element that is also crucial to the main storyline and core of the show is shaping around him. That was mostly Sam's thing before, Azazel and the special children's storyline being two main things. Even the original plan for season three was supposed to be for Sam to prevent Dean from going to hell using his powers, as far as I know. That's interesting. Yeah. Uh, This isn't to say that I didn't like things before. I don't think there's a lack of focus on Dean either. Don't get me wrong. I just appreciate the balance this season brings. Sam with his powers and Dean with the mysterious quote unquote work the angels apparently have for him. That last line, such a great way to end the episode. It really was. It was. It was. Um, It sent chills down my spine. Yeah, yeah. Uh, These were my thoughts about the episode with an awesome, the road so far, clever special effects, interesting additions to the lore, expansion of the universe in a way that opens many storylines, great writing slash directing slash acting. Lazarus Rising starts the season on a high note. This is actually my favorite season, along with season two. So I'm really excited about what you have to say for the rest of the season. Awesome. That is awesome. Um, And... Regarding like Dean being the central part of this or the lore having a part in Dean's storyline, rather, I I really like that. That that is true. Like Sam was a special one. Sam was the one that, you know, had a connection to the supernatural that they were hunting or that they were dealing with as a job. But Dean was just a normal guy. Like he didn't mm-hmm. really have anything special going on for him. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and he definitely wasn't a sidekick, but he did start to feel like, I don't know, he was kind of on the perimeter of the main storyline. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it was it was all about Sam, you mm-hmm. know? Mm-hmm. Um, Sam's relationship with his dad and, um, yeah. I mean, Dean, of course, Dean's relationship with his dad as well, but... <sighs> Yeah, it, it was it was very Sam centric. So yeah. it, it is really nice to have Dean be a, a central part of that story. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'm excited about it. He kind of, I mean, not that he deserved to go to hell, but he kind of deserves, <laughs> you know, more focus. And um, yeah, like through this storyline so, line so far, like he's working out a lot of his shit. Like his faith has been such a big. Uh, like topic for him throughout all the episodes so far and now it's being directly addressed and it's just fascinating Mm -hmm. yeah so um msa underscore arda in addition to this amazing email with 
great supporting uh, evidence of all their points and s- citing sources and everything. So I'm sure they did amazing on their midterm. <laughs> um, <laughs> also sent us a interview or like some sort of story that Kripke provided on why he decided to introduce angels to the supernatural universe. Um, So this is pretty fascinating. This comes actually from the official companion season four book um, on Supernatural written by Nicholas Knight. I mean, seriously, these sources, Um, (laughs) these citations. So it says that in the first three seasons, Kripke had a staunch no angel policy. Supervisor producer Sarah Gamble posited the idea of angels back in season two with her episode Houses of the Holy. But the reason the creature didn't turn out to be an angel in that episode, Kripke relates, was because at the time I had the no angel rule. I just didn't want them. I had this notion in my head that the only forces of good in the universe were humans. And it was sweaty, disheveled, confused humans up against this overwhelming supernatural threat. Mm -hmm. But in humanity lay the power and the ability and those tiny moments of grace which allowed good to triumph. That's my worldview, and it's what I wanted to attribute to the show. I didn't want massive supernatural creatures who were good to come in and save them. Salvation has to lie with your main characters, or else what's the point? So, I had been very resistant to the idea, but then, in between seasons three and four, I was thinking about the problem of how demon mythology was just getting kind of boring for us. Interesting. Every time a demon came up as an episode idea in season three, my co-showrunner, Bob Singer, and I always sort of sighed and said, all right, what are we going to do with the demons this time? (laughs) But then Kripke had an epiphany. I was just puttering around my house, he says, just stewing on the problem of what to do besides demons and wondering, how can we possibly expand and twist our mythology? I remember the moment. I remember where I was in my house, and I remember the thought clear as a bell. Well, if you're looking at it purely in a yin-yang way, and if you're looking at two sides of a coin, angels are the other side of the demon coin. Mm -hmm. Then one of my first thoughts was of Christopher Walken in the prophecy. I don't think I've seen that. I haven't either. Um, Well, you know, you can do angels where they're not good guys. You can do angels as nominally good in that they're fighting for heaven, but they're soldiers. I started thinking about the smiting of the firstborn and of Sodom and Gomorrah. I was considering all that and I thought, well, you could actually, uh, or you actually could have angels and have them be truly terrifying to, to give credit when credits due. It's Sarah who showed me the poems by Rainer Maria Rilke about how scary angels could be. So in the back of my head, there was already this notion that angels in their true forms were such overwhelming powers that they could be really terrifying. Along with the realization that angels could actually work on Supernatural, Kripke also realized that more than that, they needed the angels. We were attempting to have this massive off-camera scope of the universe in which these sides were battling each other, but we only had one massive side. We had the evil side, the demons. And then we had our hunters. With our production, we couldn't afford the size of demon-human battles we wanted. We just didn't have the ability. But what the angels give you is the other army. Now suddenly, we can have these massive off-camera clashes and massive off-camera drama that you can bring into the storyline you never have to see. You can just reference in dialogue. So we've kind of already been seeing that, right? Yeah. With these epic battles happening around cosmic battles or whatever apparently yeah (laughs) um with that the world started to feel more epic and much more of the star wars lord of the rings on a budget (laughs) mythos we were going for we could have this massive war between angels and demons but the story could still be about these two midwesterners in a muscle car (laughs) it just gave us so much more territory to steer through and around The other thing it did is for the first time, it made Dean a coherent and central part of the mythology. We'd always had Sam being the dark side's chosen one, but it never occurred to us to say, well, maybe Dean is the chosen one of the light side. (laughs) Now he isn't just a bystander to Sam's mythology, and that provided much more of a story engine. 
I walked into the writer's room on the first day of season four and looked at the writers who up to that point had taken to heart my very staunch no angel stance. And I said, okay, guys, angels, but they're dicks. (laughs) (laughs) That's awesome. (laughs) Yeah, that is really awesome. Yeah. Um, (laughs) Wow. There's a lot of information there. But yeah, there really is. But I, I love that, that. That's how they came around to it. And you had mentioned before that Eric Kripke didn't want to do Angels and then came around to it. And I don't know. Yeah. I'm glad he did. That It does give us a whole lot more to work with. And they're doing it I, right. I think they're doing a great job. Yeah, definitely. Um, and <laughs> poor Sarah Gamble, though. She's just like... <laughs> This is my idea first, Kripke. <laughs> you yeah. <know>? You're welcome. <laughs> yeah. Um, but no, I really like that they did it in a way that it, it's it's like the yeah, I, I don't know, maybe because I'm just studying for this fucking exam, but you know, the <laughs> Byronic he- hero. You know, it's 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 the good guy, but he's not that great. Um, because yeah. he has uh a gray moral compass in a way. Mm-hmm. Um, so, you know, we're still kind of getting to know the angels, I think, but you, we could see Castiel has already been a little bit scary. Yeah, for sure. A little I'm intense. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Okay. So this next one is actually a voicemail and this one is from Lane, AKA, um, the person uh, justice for coyote man <laughs> <laughs> hashtag justice for coyote man yes <laughs> um, thank you for that yes thank you so much so i'm gonna go ahead and play this hello ladies this is lane if my name sounds familiar it's because i did the comment of justice for coyote man so i'm going to comment on lazarus rising and are you there god it's me dean First off, Christine, congratulations on your engagement. That's so exciting. So, on to the episode itself. One thing that's always bothered me about Dean and Bobby going to see Sam. When Dean went to Bobby's house, Bobby kind of put him through the ringer to make sure that he was who he was. And that's exactly right. That's what he should have done. That is a hunter thing to do. So, they go to Sam, and Sam starts to do that, but then Bobby says, No. Sam, it's really him. And Sam takes his word for it. Well, how does Sam know that that's really Bobby? They could have both been shapeshifters, so, hmm, that could have gone bad there, Sammy. I'm also curious why they buried Dean in Pontiac, Illinois. I would have thought a better place would be close to Bobby's house, because that's the closest thing they have to a home. Choose a corner of Bobby's junkyard or something and (laughs) and plant him in there. Oh, And you guys were wondering why Sam couldn't find a demon to take the deal. My opinion on that is then the demons would have to deal with having two Winchesters in the world again. Right now, they have one Winchester in the ground, and that's the safest place for him to be for them. He's not out there hunting demons. So that's my guess when Sam says, hey, bring my brother back. I'll give you my soul. They're like, uh, no deal. When you guys were talking about, wait, angels and demons don't know each other? My take on that is they don't really play in the same sandbox. Demons want to be on Earth as much as possible, but angels rarely come down. We learn in Are You There, God? It's Me, Dean, that the angels are on Earth for the first time in like 2,000 years, where demons like to come up to Earth at the first chance they get. And as Ruby had said, they smite first and ask questions later. So my guess is any demon who does meet an angel usually doesn't live to tell about it. I agree with you ladies that they did a good call on just doing the wings shadows and not trying to CGI actual wings onto cast because, yeah, we all know that would have looked horrible. And then my comments on Are You There God? It's Me, Dean. The ball bouncing down the stairs, I believe, is a nod toward an old movie called The Changeling with George C. Scott. It's from the 1970s, and if you guys haven't seen it, oh, it's creepy as all get out. (laughs) And there's a scene where a ball bounces down the stairs, and at the top of the stairs is one of those old-fashioned wheelchairs just sitting there empty. Very (laughs) cool. 
<laughs> so like the mental so image scary. of Sam mouth breathing through the junkyard to find Bobby trying to find cold spots. So you guys crack me up. <laughs> I, I should have looked up the the actress who plays Meg Masters because she was just amazing in this episode. The part where she says, you're supposed to save people. Why didn't you save me? That part just broke my heart. And I think I, I was in tears the first time I watched that. I hope this voicemail finds you both well, and I look forward to your next episodes. See ya. Aww. <laughs> Thank you, Lane. That was so great. You know, okay, working our way back, um, that's true that we 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 said a lot of mean things about that actress who played Meg Masters during <laughs> season one, season two. I guess because she was Meg. <laughs> Right, not- but maybe this shows that it was more the writing of her rather yeah. than the acting, right? Mm-hmm. Because she did do a good job in Are You There, God? Um, no, every every part of that voicemail was so great. I need to see the changeling. Yeah, I also need to see the changeling. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds creepy, and I feel like I've heard of it before, but I've definitely never seen it. Maybe we should put that on our list. Yeah. Oh, we definitely need to put that on our list. Um, also, anytime but, you want me to like act out Sam mouth breathing through a junkyard, I'm happy to do that for you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we can do like a home video of me recreating the scene. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I, I do agree that it was weird. Where the hell is Pontiac, Illinois? Like, why is yeah. Dean buried there? <sighs> That was very Um, odd to me. Yeah, it was weird to me, too. And I think I don't remember exactly, but I think you may have brought that up when we were recording that episode. Um, Or maybe it was when we were doing our reaction video to it. But Mm -hmm. uh, you were like, where is he? Like, why is he buried here? What? What is this? It was so random. You know, mm-hmm. and then in the trees and yeah, and we and we do see that it's kind of a bit of a drive from Bobby's, you know. Yeah, and he's just buried in the forest. It's strange. It is very strange. Great, great thoughts. And Thank all around. Thank you so much. I know. Thank you so much for sending that in. Um, We actually, we do have more, but um, because... We're a little bit long now. I th- we're gonna save them for next time. Um, so yeah, don't we worry. put out a call like, "Hey, <laughs> y'all send us your stuff." And then we got too much, and we were like, "Oh, <laughs> no. you guys follow through." <laughs> but no, but everything is so amazing, so we don't want to miss any of it. Like it's mm-hmm. you guys are, are on it. Yeah. So Stacy, we got your email, girl. We got yeah. it. We're Don't gonna worry. we're gonna talk about it next time and give it more time. I'm a tired old lady. Yeah, I know. <laughs> it's past my bedtime. It's been a long day. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. But uh I'm excited to read the rest of them uh next time. But yeah. um I mean I guess until then though, you can see us on the highway to hell. Did I say that right? You can see us on the highway to hell. <laughs> I don't remember. <laughs> I don't remember either. Oh, we'll see you. <laughs> we'll see you on the highway to hell. <laughs> <laughs>